Hi, my name is Victoria Finley Wolf, and I'm a licensed designer with Sizzix. Do you want to know a secret? This is one of my favorite quilt blocks that I've wanted to make for years, but I did not want to cut out all of these pieces on my crossroads block. Making this as a Sizzix die is a perfect solution to make the quilt you've always wanted to make. So today I want to be able to show you exactly how this block goes together. We have some very gentle curves which you should not be afraid of because we have handy little dog ears that's going to make piecing a breeze. What we're going to work with today, the, the die, is actually using the Big Shot Plus machine and it'll also work with your Big Shot Pro. So I'm going to start out right away by laying some fabrics on my die. You can tell that we have several different pieces on this die and I'm using a two to three different color palette when I'm doing this. Because I'm using just that limited palette, that means I can lay various layers of those colors on here to make a parts department. And that's what I really enjoy, is just to be able to cut out my pieces and have time playing with the different colors on the design wall. So for today, I'm going to use an orange color and also my blue. I'm just going to go ahead and lay it over the entire die and cut all of those pieces out, and then I'll just play. If I want to just use an individual color um, on certain pieces, I can cut out my shapes and adjust the fabric and lay it on the die so that I'm just using the pieces that I want. Here I can use a strip to be able to cut out my orange pieces or even the little light yellow, cutting some smaller pieces off my strip and laying it on to be able to manipulate the die by placing the fabrics and the colors where I want them. Okay, But like I said, for now I'm going to just go ahead and lay my two colors on there because I can always use the other pieces. I like to go back and make a big giant quilt, so I am okay having a parts department. I have one pad below, and I have, I'm going to place my other plat pad on top. We'll go ahead and get some more parts cut out using the Big Shot Plus. Sliding that plastic top off means the static will go away and you won't lift all your pieces up. That's always nice too. But let's look at the pieces that I have here ready to go. So this is the basic construction of this block, what it's going to look like. But what we're going to go over first of all is how to piece these corner sections. So this is what I was talking about with the little dog ears. The little slight curves that we have to join these units all have the little handy dandy little tabs there so that when I'm lying these right sides together and I'm about to sew it, I know that I need to line up that mark. Knowing that that's going to fit together means these are going to lay together and sew together perfectly. So you're not, you know, don't have to deal with bias or the stretch of the fabrics. You know exactly where you're going to line it up. Okay. So by starting it, let's start with the end pieces and sewing it onto this short curve. We're going to go light right sides together. These line up right to the edge of the fabric. And I'm going to show you a little trick on what I do for sewing these curves that I can sew this together. Um, with pin or without a pin. So like I said, that's going to line up with the, the tip. This will line up at the opposite end, exactly where it needs to sit. I can put a pin in there. And then I can check it. If I hold that from pin to pin, I can see that my raw edges are already exactly lined up. So when people say that they're afraid of curves, when you actually pin it where it's supposed to land, it goes together perfectly. There's barely even a curve there anymore, so there's nothing to be afraid of. All right, so let's start getting these pieces sewn together. Every time I start to piece these, I always want to do a back stitch. One of my pet peeves is having to come back and fix a seam later because I didn't do a back stitch. So if you just do the back stitch right away, you'll be in good shape when you're piecing these together, these little units together. So you can see just how nicely that's sewed together. It's such a gentle little curve. There's really not much that you have to do other than keeping your raw edges together. All right, so let's do the opposite side of that. Pin that beginning and that end, line it up. I often see people where they'll just line up the beginning and then forget about the end, but you'd have to line up your start and your stop so that you can check it to see are those raw edges going to sit together, and that looks great. And also to remember that the part that has more fabric, the floppy top, that should always be facing up so that you can control that that extra fabric, the wobbly part, is going to go beyond your needle. This is the way we want to sew it, not this way, because then you can't control the fabric. You can't see what's happening to that floppy fabric. So that's the way we want to sew that together. Okay, so I put my fabric underneath the needle and I do my little back stitch. I take my pin out. And now I'm paying attention to, I'm putting my right hand on that second pin 
which is holding the blue fabric flat. I'm not pulling on it, I'm just keeping it flat, and I'm making sure that my raw edges of this orange fabric on top are sitting where it's supposed to. That means now I can sew all the way right to my next pin. Take my last pin out. Over, usually I'm just gonna press it to the dark, darker fabric. These are pretty even, so it's totally okay either way. Now we have those two units. Now we're gonna sew this last one. It's pretty much the same curve. So what was already easy here is gonna be just as easy there. You just have more pieces to put together in this block, but it sure looks great when you have it all together. The first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that my dog ears, the little piece that's sticking out, are lined up where they're supposed to be. I'm gonna put a pin in there, and I'll also pin at the, at the beginning there, point to point. Now you can put extra pins in there if you want. I find I don't need to do that. I really like to teach people to watch the fabric as it goes under the machine because that way the feed dogs are going to do their job and take the fabric through the machine the way it's supposed to. Take out that first pin. I make sure that my raw edges and my fabric are laying nicely together, which they do. That's the beauty of cutting with the Sizzix. These pieces are always going to be perfectly cut and they just lay together nicely. That's the first side. And now we do the same on the opposite side. It's a very satisfying block. Everybody who says they don't like curves, this is such a gentle little curve, it just makes all your other quilting piecing go up a notch. If you just slow down and take a look and watch the fabrics go into the machine, you do a block that looks so complicated like this, it makes you want to go make a king size quilt. And there's our first unit. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to press that. I'm going to press those browns out to the blue side. That'll help so that I don't have any shadowing and they'll lay nice and flat. Here's our piece. It's all pressed. Taking care when you press these pieces to make sure that you're getting the fabrics evenly opened up on your seams so that the whole thing will actually lay flat. Okay, so now we have our four units. Let's look at how this block goes together. And notice now we have the, the orange strip in the middle. We're going to be able to make this into halves. So we're going to sew these together and these together, which will be the same. And then we'll just start here by sewing our little straight seams to make this. I'm still backstitching. I just find that's a good tip just to do it. Just take the time to do it so your seams stay together. And I will press those seams to the dark fabric. Now we're going to put these together. Now when we lie these right sides together, the straight edges are going to line up perfectly. And at this end, it's the same. That You'll notice that the little blue already has a dog ear on it. The little point is cut off, which means your raw edge of your fabric lies right to the edge. It's the same angle of the orange piece. So go ahead and line that up and put a pin in it and also line up your beginning edge. Here you can see the dog ear on this side where that angle that's already cut off is lining up perfectly with the orange. That's what you need to line up. Again, you always line up your beginnings and your ends. Take the time to make that pin. That way you're going to get a straight edge once you've sewn these blocks together. Now I do like to sew these with the part with all the seams on top so that I can make sure that when I'm sewing this that I'm keeping my seams laying flat and that they're not twisting uh, as I'm going. That dog ear also really marks your sewing line. So if you're sewing a quarter inch seam, you will notice that your stitching line is going to come right off the end of that dog eared point that matches up. So that's also a guide for you to check. Are you still sewing a quarter inch? That's what's going to make your blocks lay together nicely because the pieces are designed with a quarter inch seam. I can go ahead and finish sewing the rest of these. i got to make sure I'm looking at what I'm doing too. Don't forget to look to see if you're actually sewing it together the right way. It's very easy to get confused about what pieces lay in which direction. All right, there's my dog ear again so I know exactly where to line that up. Now we have our unit sewn together, we need to put our final strip in. So here we have this, we're going to lay this right sides together. 
We have all of our seams pressed nice and flat so everything is laying just beautifully. And when I pin this, I like to pin at a quarter inch into my seam. When I'm trying to make two seams line up perfectly, if I put that pin exactly through where I need to stitch it, I know that those seams are going to live together nicely. So one pin through the first layer, then pin the second layer. If you try to guess, you sew it and you open it up and it's wrong, that's the reason. Do it one layer at a time. And again, then the second layer is going to get pinned at a quarter inch as well. So I know if I've pinned it where it needs to live and I sew it, they're going to end up, when I open it up, it's going to be sitting exactly where I want it to be. Quarter inch through the first seam, quarter inch through the second seam. Okay, so that's pinned. Now again, out on this end, we have that nice little dog ear once more. Lines up right with the angle of our center strip. We make sure we line that up and put a pin in that. I'm going to flip it over so my seams will be on the top when I'm stitching it. Line up the last corner. I can lay in an extra pin just to hold this in its place. Now you'll notice that I'm stitching right up to my pin. Once I get to that pin, I will take that pin out, but I do not take it out too early or those seams will move. We took the time to pin it properly. We want to make sure that that's going to stay put. So right up to that pin and then take the pin out. There you can see how nicely those seams line up. It's worth it to take that time to sew up to the pin right bef one stitch before it, then take your pin out so that you don't move those seams so that you, they all line up nice. It's an easy thing to do. It doesn't take a lot of time and it just makes the block look really, really good. And then we do the same thing on the last unit. Pinning through that top layer. I'm actually checking to make sure that pin is coming right through that seam and a quarter inch into the other seam. Now I want to give those final seams a press so that it's all laying nice and flat. Look at that beauty. See, isn't that the quilt you always wanted to make or is it just me? I think the Crossroads block is just a really amazing project to be able to work on with just using some simple colors because the pattern is just so interesting. Let's look at the quilt behind me just for a second and I'll tell you a little bit about what I did with this. So you'll notice that there's a lot of different orange colors, brown colors, orange colors that I've used. Guess what? I ran out of fabric. So I go to my stash and I look through to see what else do I have. That also adds just a nice subtle element. If you look at an old antique quilt where things have faded or changed a little bit, I love how the direction and the movement of the quilt can change just by adding some simple shifts in color. So it's okay to use up those pieces and make a very interesting quilt by just playing with those little subtle different color changes. But the pattern of this is what's just so charming. Okay, I have one more layout of the block that I want to show you. Not really different layout, but color layout. Look at how exciting and different that is by dropping in a little bit more fussy on your color placement on the pieces that you're going to lie in there. You can do a lot of different things with the pattern, giving it more this sort of pie pinwheel sort of a shape going around on the inside and having some fun with making the circles of the pattern really jump out, but by just by doing that with color placement. So I hope you're going to have a really great time playing with this die. I'm already making my king size quilt, but I can't wait to see what you do with this die.